Hey guys, Dan here. Welcome to this video. Today we're doing some benchmarks with the new 12900K. Well, new. I recently built a new PC using that Intel processor and I wanted to see how it compares to the 5950X in my other system. Regarding the specs of the system, the AMD system is the 5950X with uh, 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 400 megahertz and CL16 timings, whereas the Intel is the 12900K with 32 gigabytes of RAM, so just half the amount uh, at 6000 megahertz running CL36 timings. Uh, the GPU I'm using is the 3080 Ti from Gigabyte, the Aorus Master I think. Uh, was a big pain to get that into the water-cooled PC because the Ryzen is running in a custom loop so I had to remove the 3090 and, and like connect the, uh, the water cooling lines and then put the 3080 it was a pain, but uh, but here we are. Both benchmarks are done with the 3080 Ti, so same GPU. Uh, the main board in the AMD system is the Asus Strix X570E. And in the Intel, I used the MSI Tomahawk Z690 DDR5 version. As for overclocking, they both run basically stock settings. What I did is I enabled the PBO on the AMD system and that game boost mode on the Intel system, which is an overclock of 100 MHz, if I remember correctly. Okay, like I said, the AMD is using a custom water loop, so temperature's not an issue at all, and the Intel is using the Noctua D15, and temperatures were absolutely no problem as well. Benchmarks were all run five times, and then I averaged the values. We'll have a look at the averages at the 1% percentile and at the 0.1% percentile. All right, the first thing I did is like iRacing, a qualifying lap, so only one car on track, 1080p single screen, so there should be no GPU bottleneck, and we can clearly see that the 12900K has so much more FPS. It's like, I mean, not that it really matters because it's like 430 FPS on the Ryzen compared to like 580 FPS average on the uh, Intel system. And then also we see the same in the 1% and 0.1% percentiles. But I think 1080p single screen, it's, it's not a very realistic scenario. So uh, let's move to 1440p triple screen benchmarks. And we can see that the Intel still gives like 25 more FPS on average and also the 1% percentiles and the 0.1 are a bit higher. So overall, the Intel definitely outperforms the Ryzen here. What I discovered is like iRacing is especially CPU bottlenecked at the starts. Uh, so next benchmark scenario is an iRacing start. Again, 1080p single screen first. We can see the 12900K also like... It's, it's the same picture, like, across the benchmarks. It beats the 5950 by quite a few FPS, both on average and on the 1% uh, and 0.1% percentiles. Let's uh, move to the 1440p triple screen benchmarks. The most noticeable difference here is the, uh, the, the orange and the blue bar, like the 1% and the 0.1% percentiles. It is definitely noticeable. This is like the first thing when I built the new PC and I, I did a spa race. At the start, I noticed, oh my god, yeah, this is much more smooth. It's especially the situations where your FPS will drop into very low numbers, like at the start or when you pass the pit lane or something, where the Intel system really is much faster than the AMD. It's, it's much more than I expected, to be honest. I thought, okay, maybe like a few percent, but this is like not, negli negli not negligible. Oh my god, that word. So, yeah. I also had a look at a 4K triple screen, but we are so GPU bottlenecked in that scenario, there's basically no difference. I mean, if you look at the values, this is like within the uh, margin of error from the, from the benchmarks. So basically same result. We are just heavily bottlenecked by the GPU and the CPU is like bored. All right, so next game, ACC. Basically a very comparable picture here. First of all, we'll have a look at the QualiLab 1080p single screen, the 12900K being like 25 FPS uh, quicker on average and also the same picture we have on the on the low FPS number 1% and 0.1% so very comparable and then same picture also with the start just like with lower FPS on on average but the Intel being quite a bit quicker than the AMD system if we are going to the triple screen benchmark I guess we are already in the GPU bottleneck all these benchmarks on ACC were done with the Epic preset and DLSS on the quality preset but nevertheless, we are basically like getting nearly the same numbers here for the AMD and for the Intel system. So no big difference on triple screens. All right. Uh, another thing I had a look at is memory speed. I found out like on the AMD system that iRacing is very, very dependent on memory speed. I saw big differences there on the AMD benchmarks. Um, with the Intel, you still have quite some difference, but... Uh, 
I think it's not as crazy as I found with my AMD benchmarks. So you can see like at 4,800 megahertz, we have an average of 182.4 and at 6,400 megahertz, uh, 191 fps on average and then the one percent and 0.1 percent percentile so this is such a weird word to say percentile um there's also about 10 fps the difference between 4800 and 6400 megahertz i actually bought a kit a 6000 kit running at cl36 but i could easily overclock it to 6400 so try it out if you have memory uh might be worth to to do a manual overclock there and the last thing i checked is like i ran a replay of an iRacing race 40 minutes took an average of the power consumption measured in cap frame x i don't know how accurate it is i didn't measure the the power consumption of the whole pc i just took these values and what i found out is like it's very comparable the 12900k with 99 watts on average and the amd with 102 watts on average so when the Intel first got released, everybody was like, oh my god, like you need a nuclear power plant to power it. I didn't really see it. It doesn't really run hot. It doesn't really like throw a lot of power while gaming. It might draw more power in like uh, benchmark scenarios where you really stress test the CPU. But like gaming, iRacing, ACC, there's like basically no difference with the Intel even like using a little less power so yeah all right so these are the results for the benchmarks. I don't want to make like a super long video because like who watches that for benchmarks, right? You can pause at the specific scenes when you're interested in specifically that. Um, one thing to mention, like mainboard, RAM and CPU for the Intel system was 20 euros in total more than the AMD system, even though it uses DDR5. So I would say like around about the same price. Uh, I think for sim racing, it is clear what to get. The Intel beats uh, the AMD in every scenario. And what I also found out is like, if you're a streamer and you do single PC streaming, the drop in performance on the Intel system is much less than on the AMD system. I don't know why, maybe because of these efficiency cores, but it doesn't really make sense because the AMD should have 16 similar cores, whereas the Intel only has eight of these high performance cores, but that's what I found out. There's really only a, a small drop in performance on the Intel when you do a CPU encoding while gaming. So if you're streaming, it's an even bigger plus for the Intel, I would say. So yeah, another point, maybe the 12,600K, 12,700K are even better in terms of price performance here because like all the sim racing titles are so badly optimized. It uses like two and a half threads or so of the CPU, at least iRacing does. So if you're strictly buying a CPU for gaming, no, no streaming, no other apps or what do I know, then I would probably like try to get the 12,600K or something, overclock it a bit. I don't know. I haven't tested it, but um, I guess the verdict of this video is like Intel is currently the one to get. I mean, the CPU is much newer. It should be better, but like in the past with Intel, you know, it, it didn't mean like, hey, it's a new CPU. It must be better, right? I remember the benchmarks of the 11 series I did, which were worse than the 10 series. So yeah, you got to test it out. And that's what I did with this video. I hope these results helped you. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you are maybe getting and I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye bye.